Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In this specimen, we have an overview of the veins, the superficial veins of the side of the face. Passing downward along the side of the nose is the angular vein, which when it receives the tributaries from the mouth region, the superior and inferior labial veins, its name then changes to the facial vein. And it continues down crossing the lower border of the mandible and into the area of the upper portion of the neck. In association with that, running from the side of the head is the superficial temporal vein and it passes directly in front of the ear and down into the parotid gland that has now been removed. And in its course behind the ramus of the mandible a vein will be passing into it from deep within called the maxillary vein. And when the junction of the superficial temporal and maxillary vein is found, this vein then has a name change of retromandibular. Retromandibular, that is behind the mandible, and it continues downward again into the area of the upper portion of the neck into the submandibular gland region. At this point, the vein then usually receives a, another vein coming from the back of the ear. In this specimen, that vein was non-existent, or it was shown only as this very, very small remnant instead of being a large size vein, posterior auricular vein. And then continues downward diagonally across the sternocleidomastoid muscle as the external jugular vein. Also up in the side of the face region, we will find a vein in some specimens near the parotid duct that will run superficially and transversely across the face and masseter muscle. This is the transverse facial vein that will terminate posteriorly in the retromandibular. The angular facial complex of veins here are extremely important. These veins that we've been describing along here as well as in the retromandibular area are veins without valves. That is, the blood can pass in either direction, downward or upward, especially in the facial angular vein system, to go towards the medial side of the nose and join with a vein that is very prominent coming out of the orbit. All of the orbital structures have now been removed, and we can see here this superior ophthalmic vein that passes backwards through the orbit and eventually terminates in the cavernous plexus on the side of the cella tersica. Valveless veins, again an infection, as we had mentioned previously with the cavernous sinus, an infection along the side of the nose area and the upper lip could pass upward through angular to the superior ophthalmic and directly into the cavernous sinus. These are veins then that you should see. They are accompanied by arteries. And here, for example, is the facial artery running along with the facial vein and arising from this artery and passing into the lower lip is the inferior labial artery and higher up and behind this, the zygomaticus major, a branch will go into upper lip structures 
as the superior labial artery. It then continues along the side of the nose in association with the angular vein. Now let's take a look at some of these arteries on another specimen. On this specimen, in general, the venous pattern has been removed and reflected. And here, coming up through the carotid area in the carotid sheath is the common carotid artery. It bifurcates and sends a branch off that goes forward as the external carotid and one of its first branches that will be arising to go into the thyroid area is the superior thyroid artery. The next branch coming off will pass upward deep underneath the mandible, hooking around then onto the lateral surface of the mandible to pass upward as a facial artery. The facial artery here has two branches, again one to the lower lip, the inferior labial artery, and one to the upper lip, the superior labial artery. Also, we can see on the side of the face, when the parotid gland has not been dissected, the beginnings of the superficial temporal artery as it emerges from the parotid gland, which is this structure here, and passes upward in front of the ear opening. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.